Today I'm going to be showing you guys my entire handheld collection and if you don't know who I am, my name is Naomi and I go by Luna Moore. I've been wanting to jump into YouTube for quite some time. I figured a good video to start with would be my handheld collection. It's pretty sizable, it's decent. I would say an average person doesn't have the amount of consoles that I have, but in the collecting community, this is kind of a small collection. <laughs> there are definitely a lot of consoles that I want to get in my collection that I don't currently have. For example, I've never had a PS Vita, I've never had a PSP Go. I've really really want to get a new 3DS, the non-XL version, the one that had the interchangeable shells, but I do have quite a few consoles, so let's get into it. First up, I've got my dad's Donkey Kong Game & Watch, so technically this doesn't belong to me. It's missing the battery cover, so I can't actually turn it on and show you how it works. Game & Watch is just really cool. I've been eyeing off the modern version of the Game & Watch, the one that they sell that's got Zelda on it. Next up, we have some Game Boy Colors. This one actually belongs to my older sister, and this one is mine that I bought off Depop a couple of years ago. It's in real rough shades, missing the back battery cover, the screen slightly damaged. I actually bought this console with the intention of modding it. I just have been able to afford the mod kit but if you guys are interested in seeing that video when I finally get around to it let me know. This is my older sister's old Game Boy Color. I tried to turn it on the other day and it wasn't working though which is really sad. Off to a really good start with this video having the first three consoles not actually in functioning condition. I mean this one turns on it just doesn't look very good so. <laughs> Next up I have a purple Pokemon Mini and I love this. It is so cute. If you've never seen the Pokemon Mini it's kind of like a very little Game Boy and it actually has interchangeable cartridges and different games you can put in it. This is the size of a Game Boy Color cartridge and this is the size of the Pokemon Mini cartridges so they're very small. Currently I only own two cartridges which is Pokemon Party Mini and Pokemon Puzzle Collection. I used to keep this in my pencil case when I was in like year 11 and 12 so I definitely wasn't using it when it came out. I was using it like six years ago in high school but it was so good I just kept it in my pencil case and <laughs> whenever I got bored in class I would play it. Next up we have my backlit Game Boy Advance which I have definitely put posted about this on my TikTok before. I actually bought and modded this console myself back in 2019, so a couple years ago now. And honestly, this console at the moment is my go-to. It's just so portable. It's small, the screen's great, the games are fun. I have a Nintendo Switch, but I don't consider them to be a portable console necessarily. Handheld, yes. Portable? Not so much. If I had a Switch Lite, maybe. I definitely want to do more mods on this at some point because this is my go-to console and I think I really want to add like a rechargeable USB-C mod, a dimmable screen because at the moment it only has one brightness setting, and maybe even put in some new speakers because the speaker quality on these isn't great. But for my first and currently only mod that I've done on the Game Boy, I'm pretty happy with this. Next up I have a little stack of Game Boy Advance SPs. These two silver ones actually belong to my older sisters. I keep them safe in my collection. And then I have this light blue one which is actually my one. This particular model also comes in a really nice pastel pink colour. It's like a soft metallic pink. It's so pretty. I would love to get that colour eventually and also the version with the 101 screen. If you don't know these actually came with two different displays. There's the AGS001 and the AGS101. 101 is the better display all three of the ones I have here at the moment are 001. If you have an SP and you want to know which one you have, all you need to do is look at the back next to where it says Game Boy Advance SP. It'll say AGS 001 or AGS 101. This is my original DS console and I want to say I was six years old when I got this, but I feel like I would have been probably closer to eight. Either way, it was a long time ago <laughs> when I got it. It kind of makes me like tear up a little bit. I'm not actually gonna cry right now. <laughs> we had home consoles growing up, but something about getting your own gaming console that's just for you is really special. <laughs> and this thing was great. It plays DS, it plays Game Boy, it plays Game Boy Advance. This was also the first console I ever played Animal Crossing on, which was Animal Crossing Wild World. And I remember playing Nintendogs, Tamagotchi Corner Shop. Tamagotchi Corner Shop in particular, I remember that it was just like a bunch of mini games. It was so fun. And honestly, Nintendogs, still kind of fun. I looked after my stuff really well because the original stylus that came with this thing is still in there. I have two DS lights. This pink one is my sister's. And then this black one I actually picked up at an op shop. I think it was like 20 bucks I paid and it came with a whole bunch of games. I do actually want to clean this up and give it a bit of a makeover and decorate it with lots of Sanrio stickers. I mean, the stickers on it at the moment are pretty cute. Bakugan, Transformers. The DS Lite is such a good console 
well. It's so portable. It plays Game Boy Advance, Game Boy, DS. Like there's such a good catalogue of games that you can get in something this size. It won't replace my backlit Game Boy Advance, but it will be my secondary to it. There are quite a few DS games that I've been wanting to go back and play. Like a lot of the old Zelda games. I actually just ordered Super Princess Peach recently. Let me know what your favourite DS game was because I want to know what else I should add to my collection. Mine was definitely Animal Crossing Wild World. Ruby. <laughs> Ruby. <laughs> Next up I have this DSi. I just find the DSi really interesting because they got rid of the Game Boy Advance port and they added a camera. Another fun little fact about the DSi is that in PictoChat it has the rainbow pen. So you could write with your rainbow pen and send it in PictoChat and people on DS Lights and original DSs could see the rainbow but they didn't have access to the rainbow pen which is just so interesting. I just realized I only have one non-Nintendo handheld. That's kind of sad. <laughs> this is my PSP 3000 Little Big Planet Edition. I still have it with the box and everything. I've had this since I was a kid. I remember having my DSi and actually trading it in so that I could get this. At the time I don't think that was a good move because these were actually getting older and the DSi was newer but I didn't care because I really wanted a PSP and you know what? I'll say it. PSPs were ahead of their time. You had UMD movies, you could put movies on the memory card and watch it from it, you could put music on it. These things had Skype on them, web browsers. I even have an AV cable somewhere for mine so that you can connect it to a TV. These things were so cool. It had so many features that other handhelds on the market at the time were lacking. I say all that though as if I wasn't, you know, 10 years old using this and not using any of that. <laughs> I'm gonna take it out of the box and show you guys everything that came in it though. Because this is a Little Big Planet edition, it did come with this Sackboy carry case. It's very much used because I used it to carry my PSP around. I think this is so cute. I wish they did themed editions more like this where it came with like a matching case and everything. Of course it came bundled with the Little Big Planet PSP game, which Little Big Planet, if you've never played it, fantastic game. Highly recommend. Now I can't actually turn this on right now because the battery actually expanded in it and I had to throw it out but I will show some footage and some clips of me using it because it does work when you plug it into power. I also have this little thing here which is a PSP camera. It just clips in the top here. I remember using it specifically for the iPad game. There were quite a few games you could get that worked with this camera accessory as well as you could actually just you know use it as a camera. And you know what? This one is a step above the DSi because it's not 0.3 megapixels. It's 1.3 megapixels. It's a whole one pixel more. Next up we have my Nintendo 3DS. This one is a little bit sentimental as well because I remember getting this for my 12th birthday and I remember begging my mom for it and telling her how much I wanted it and at the time they were a lot more expensive. These retailed for $350 when they first came out. I remember they dropped down to like 250 bucks like the year after they came out. I do have everything still in the box though. I do still have the entire operation manual in case you actually wanted to read the manual instead of just googling it. I still have the AR cards sealed up in the plastic packaging that they came in. One thing I will say that I loved about the original 3DS is that it came with this docking station. You just would sit this next to your bed and then when you got home and needed to charge it you would just sit it in the dock. Wait a second. I think I just realized something. <laughs> Did I just forget for a good 10 seconds then that the Switch literally comes with the dock also? Yes. But something about this dock is just so much easier to use. This Cosmo Black 3DS was also the first console I played Animal Crossing New Leaf on, which is my personal favorite Animal Crossing game. The username that I go by online, Lunamore, I actually came up with as my town name in my Animal Crossing New Leaf save, and I've used it as like my gamer tag ever since. As a kid getting a 3DS, this thing was fantastic. The amount of pre-installed games, the Me Plaza, the AR games with the augmented reality cards, camera, the 3DS sound app that you could just kind of like mess around with. Also Street Pass, meet other people's Mees just by walking past them. This was great. There was just so many cool things about the 3DS that I thought were really cool, but I think they just became dated for a lot of people. The actual 3D element of the 3DS was kind of gimmicky and I never really played many games with it on but it was cool. I don't know about you guys but when I played Animal Crossing New Leaf and I needed those coins so that I could buy the fortune cookies from Timmy and Tommy's 
I used to sit there with my DS closed and I would shake it to try and get my steps up and it worked. Next up I have my Happy Home Designer new 3DS XL which I bought this when I was 16 years old. It's probably four or five years down the track and I wanted to upgrade so I took it as the opportunity to upgrade. I still do have the original packaging as well. So the new 3DS consoles actually had a bit of a hardware upgrade and there were a few exclusive titles for it. Not many, but there was a few. They also added the built-in amiibo functionality, whereas on the previous models you had to buy a separate reader that connected via infrared. And they also added a little C-stick. I don't think I've actually ever had to use the C-stick, probably because I only ever really played Animal Crossing New Leaf. Also, I just wanted to show that I got this 3DS pouch off an Etsy store. I will put the link in the bio. It's very high quality, it cost me too much money to get sent to Australia. This is the last handheld that I I have in my collection which is the Animal Crossing New Leaf 2DS XL. This console is probably the prettiest console in my collection. Design wise they nailed it with this special edition. It's honestly one of my favorite special editions of all time. I don't know what it is about the 2DS XLs but Nintendo went hard with the designs on those. The Minecraft one, the Pikachu one, the Pokeball one, the Hyrule one which the Hyrule one never came out here and I really wanted. It's a really nice off-white color with the green details. This is one of my favorite things in my collection because I love Animal Crossing New Leaf. The design of this special edition is quite possibly one of my favorites of all time. I love when they don't just like print something on a console and call it a special edition. I love this. I love that they've actually embossed it and put the detail into it and this little leaf actually sinks down into the console. This console actually came pre-installed with a copy of Animal Crossing New Leaf so now I have three copies of Animal Crossing New Leaf. I do also still have the box for this one. Any of my special editions and pretty much any of my handhelds I keep the boxes for. Look at the size difference from this to this. That is my entire handheld collection but there is one more thing that I want to show in this video. This is from a company called Retro Gaming Studio. They take old unusable tech and they recycle it into an artwork that you can hang on your wall. It's really cool. Oh my god. Stop! What the hell? They put a Hello Kitty Game Boy cartridge in there. They put my Deadpool cosplay in there. Isn't that so cool? Definitely go check these guys out. Retro Gaming Studio. I'll chuck their links down below. Like you can already tell from the background, the vibes match so well. <laughs> that is so sick. If you enjoyed listening to me ramble about video games, please subscribe. Room tour and retro gaming setup tour coming soon. I'm gonna chuck all my other social links down in the description. Feel free to message me on Instagram if you have any questions or really shitty Sonic memes you want to send to me, please send me really shitty Sonic memes. I want to see them. I'm gonna go to bed now because it is 11 o'clock at night. I'm out. <laughs>